So which ones should we grab today? Okay, let's go. Good morning, everyone. So I've made two videos now, both on how and why RVs tend to have a higher likelihood of quality problems versus, say, a car or a pickup truck. Now let's do a quick recap before getting into this video topic. In the first video, I referenced a message from one of my subscribers who had sent me explaining in detail all the problems they had with their travel trailer since purchasing it new roughly two years ago. I pointed out that the RV buyer is a customer of a dealership and the dealership is a customer of the manufacturer. Yes, you could easily make the argument that the buyer is both the customer of the dealership and the manufacturer, but for the sake of problem resolution, the dealership should be responsible for making sure that the RV is sales ready before it ends up in the hands of a family looking to build great memories using it. The main point of the video was to outline the importance of being mechanically inclined as well as keeping enough tools and repair supplies on board and available in the event of an emergency, especially while camping or on the road. In the second video, I attempted to respond to commenters who wanted to know specifically what brands to look for with the fewest number of quality issues. I spoke about the process of building RVs and why they have such a higher likelihood of quality and assembly related problems. I pointed to the process of building an RV that it's a very manually intensive process and hands-on versus the automotive industry which relies heavily on robots and computers for fit and finish and assembly. I didn't mention any specific brands as being superior simply because unless you're willing to go with a small boutique manufacturer that can monitor every step of the assembly process or a super high-end brand that's generally outside the budget of most shoppers, you're not going to be guaranteed that any one brand is going to be superior to another. This quality issue is simply due to the fact that manufacturers push their employees to move product down the line and assembly lines quickly and the lack of both higher quality materials as well as fewer materials being used in an attempt to lessen the weight generally cause problems. In the first video, quite a few commenters asked me to name off brands they felt I thought were going to be better than others. In the second video, many commenters felt I didn't deliver that because I didn't specifically mention any brands that might be better perhaps than another brand. In this video, I'm going to explain why and try to close out that topic. Now, if I simply came out and said, the Forest River Cardinal, or the Heartland Big Country, or the Jayco Pinnacle, or the Grand Design Solitude were the best brands, then I'd be pointing you to a specific make and model and not so much a brand in general. All the brands have so many lines of RVs from travel trailers to fifth wheels and many of them even produce motorhomes. How could I honestly say that one brand is superior to another given the fact that they all have multiple assembly plants and upwards of thousands of employees building them? Since roughly 90% of travel trailer shoppers want to spend between about $15,000 to $35,000 out the door on a travel trailer, meaning that they're looking at units with MSRPs ranging from roughly $25,000 to $45,000, this is going to make it challenging to really find a huge difference in quality from one manufacturer to another. If your budget is significantly higher, let's say that you're in the $70,000 plus range, you can add Airstream to your list as well as a few other boutique brands. These brands, including Airstream, are generally going to be built out of aluminum or assembled from fiberglass and potentially riveted and glued together. So naturally, there are going to be construction perks that go along with that level of fit and finish. The only problem is that many people find Airstreams to be too small and too expensive for their family, especially when you can get a much larger and better equipped unit or even fifth wheel for much less. Now if you're dead set on getting an Airstream, you're likely to get a very well built unit, but you're going to pay for it. Another brand that I really like that's much less expensive is a Grand Design Reflection. Not that the process of building it is much different than other mainstream travel trailers, but their final inspection process, or manufacturer's PDI, is supposed to be outstanding, which then of course drives improvement to the manufacturing process itself. Another brand that's supposed to build really great high quality travel trailers is Oliver. They're built using several internal and external fiberglass shells around an aluminum frame. They'll be less expensive than an Airstream, but you're going to have a limited number of floor plans, even though the build quality and life expectancy should be outstanding. Now, neither Airstream or Oliver will offer travel trailers with slide outs. So even though you will get a very well-built trailer that makes good use of space, you may not get the overall room you're looking for. Since, for my family, space and price are important, as well as a feeling of being in a home-style RV, 
we'd probably opt for something like the Grand Design Reflection 312 BHTS travel trailer. Now fifth wheels on the other hand span such a large price range with well over 200 floor plan options available and since pretty much all fifth wheel brands make similar type floor plan options you really need to pay close attention to details that separate different models and makes. Again Grand Design which is owned by Winnebago is a great mid-priced fifth wheel brand that tends to really have fewer issues mainly because of the inspection process. And I know that some of my subscribers have Grand Design RVs and several of them have indicated some of the problems they've had as well as how they haven't had the greatest resolution by dealers and manufacturers. This is why it's so difficult to say one brand's better than another because they're all built with so many parts by dozens of people over a relatively short period of time that they're prone to have manufacturing problems. I'm a big fan of Palomino Columbus fifth wheels. It's also a Forest River brand, by the way, and many people love them, but I've seen owners that have reported major issues with their Columbus units. Now there are brands that are known to be built very well and tend to have fewer quality related issues. These tend to be far more expensive though. Brands like Spacecraft, New Horizon, DRV, Augusta, and several others have extremely high price tags, but generally use higher grade materials and follow better manufacturing process since they're built much slower and follow a much more rigid assembly process. Many people may not know that there are really only a few brands that haven't been purchased by either Thor or Forest River, which is a Berkshire Hathaway company. Once you have a mammoth parent company that owns you, they sometimes make good and bad changes to the process to improve profit margins. Sometimes these changes are great and can lead to more technology, better fit and finish, but sometimes they lead to more problems when the speed of manufacturing trumps the quality of work. Sometimes they don't touch the process because they don't want to damage the name that a specific brand has for itself, such as Airstream. Now, I don't want anyone to be under the illusion that I'm biased towards any RV manufacturer or even looking to support a specific product they build. The reason I don't recommend brands is because I believe all of them have the possibility of problems after the sale. For example, our fifth wheel is not considered a high-end brand, it's had a few problems and issues, some of the problems with trim not being secured properly, some of the problems with plumbing. I've personally seen the lack of attention to detail in some areas. Do we love our chaparral? Yes, we do. Do we feel the need to buy a $130,000 fifth wheel to have a higher quality unit? Heck no, because I'm not going to spend that much money when I know what we have is perfect for us and I can pretty much repair anything that goes wrong within reason. Even if we purchased a $130,000 fifth wheel, many of the major components that could fail in our unit could fail in the higher end ones. Things like the slide technology, electric jacks, plumbing connections are no different regardless of price. Guys, at the end of the day, we love RVing and I know a lot of you do too. I don't believe you need to spend a fortune on buying a super high-end model if you're only doing it because you think it's going to be built better. 99% of the time the things that go wrong are problems that any semi-mechanically inclined person can fix quickly and cheaply. Plus, they give you the opportunity to buy the tools and equipment that can even be used on your car, truck, or in your home at times. To wrap things up, here's my advice when shopping for a new RV. A. Set a budget you can afford without struggling to make a payment. B. Shop around for the best price, regardless of brand. C. Do a very thorough inspection of the unit, testing things like the holding tanks, water pump, plumbing, slides, fans, fixtures, appliances, electrical switches and outlets. Also check seals, trims, and other things to make sure that they're working the way they should and are attached properly. D. Buy a good set of mechanics tools as well as household tools, power drills, and impact driver. E. Keep a good supply of adhesives, sealants, tapes, as well as extra screws, bolts, and fasteners with you all the time. F. Be prepared that you may actually have to use those tools. G. Maintain your RV, your tires, your suspension components, slides, and roof. H. Come up with any reason not to take your RV back to the dealership for repairs so long as they can be easily done yourself or with the help of a friend, unless of course it's a major repair that requires a dealer shop. Guys, I truly want everyone to experience the RV lifestyle. Don't think that you have to go broke or lose your hair doing it. Be smart, be resourceful, and be prepared, and you will pretty much enjoy any RV you buy, from the cheapest to the most expensive. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope that I've cleared up any issues that you may have had with my last two videos. If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to my channel, leave comments, and if you like my channel, please give me a thumbs up. Have a great day.